Okay, so um, we're going to be looking at this week proportional control. Okay, and so actually, I guess before I get too much into that, let me just um, remind you we talked last week about closed loop control. And so if I go to the slides here. Um, there we go. So um, let me just call up the slides here and review a little bit about the closed loop control. And we want to look at the uh, system response. Okay, so I guess I need to open up the closed loop control one too. I didn't have a picture of the, uh, I wanna look at the control block first and then we'll talk about the system response again. All right, so first of all, let's talk about the open loop system. So with the open loop system here, we have uh, this block diagram kind of thing happening where we have the desired set point, okay, feeding into our system. So the example that I had in the slides was with like a dryer system, where we just had a timer and we would set the timer. So the input to the timer, the timer is really part of the dryer, right? So you have your control on there is the timer. So you set that set point and tell the timer that you want it to run for 25 minutes and then you hit the start button the dryer starts and it runs for 25 minutes and the uh you know the result is you may still have wet clothes or maybe they got too dry and shrunk a little bit or who knows what happened right so it's just we just set the timer and wait for the timer to finish and and that's what we get okay so that's the open loop system on the closed loop system on the other hand <clears throat> we now have some sort of sensor in here that is measuring the actual dryness of the clothes and we're going to feed that back through negative feedback into what we call the summing junction and the we take the set point as an input to the summing junction and we take the difference the set point minus the feedback to generate this error signal this error signal now we're going to feed into uh some sort of controller and with that controller then we're going to make adjustments to feed into the voltage of the heating elements so that we can make the heating elements hotter or cooler <clears throat> in response to the actual um, moisture within the clothes. And so this gives us this constant feedback loop happening here. Okay? So that's the closed loop system. Okay? So, but the other aspect I wanted to talk about here was of the system response then so when we look at a system okay we get several possibilities of a re response all right so when our set point changes so the set point is this vertical line up here and you guys don't really see the mouse cursor so i'm going to just uh grab some sort of arrow okay all right so so the set point is this 
vertical line. So we're we set this and it it's uh, this is what we call that step change we talked about. So we're we go from zero or whatever this previous value is doesn't have to be zero and it's not going to be for our system today. But we were at this point and then we change it and we want to get to this point. All right. And so this straight line here is our current set point. And then what we're going to do then, or what the system does, is it moves along toward the new set point. Okay. And so that's <clears throat> that's our response. Now, this response that's being shown is an exponential, uh, what we often refer to as a first order response. Um, and it's uh, it's over damped, okay? It's very slow. Uh, so I'm just kind of trying to remind you about some of these responses. So on the other hand, when we look at some of these other ones here, so here we have the over damped response, but the on the drawing to the right, we have an under damped response. So it comes up, it comes up much, much faster but it actually overshoots the set point and then oscillates around that. And then over here, we have some final value where the final value is not touching the set point value, okay? So this is what we referred to as the steady state error. This slide's just saying offset. Now that offset can occur whether you have overshoot or not. You can still have this difference between your set point and your final value, which is what we refer to later in these slides as the steady state error. Okay. So we have several different things to look at here. We have the amount of time it takes to rise up. We have the amount of overshoot, which we refer to as the per, uh, percent overshoot. And we have the steady state error. So let me just kind of flip through. We've been through these slides. I'm just trying to remind you here of that. So on this system here, or this drawing here, um, we're showing you three different systems. The green system is a system with uh, a lot of dampening, a lot of resistance, and it's a very, very slow system. The red is what we call critically damped. Okay, so the critically damp is going to speed up and head toward the final value as quickly as possible without overshoot. If it was going to go up any faster, it would result in overshoot, which is what the blue system is showing. Okay. So we can have three basic responses to a change in our set point, and that's an overdamped response, the green critically damped, which is as fast as we can go without overshoot, or an under damped response, which means we're gonna overshoot and possibly bounce around before we get back to our final value. All right, so when we look at these various uh, responses then, Okay, so the, uh, these are referred to as tr the transient response. So the transient response is looking at what happens when there is some kind of disturbance in the system. That disturbance can be the uh, change in set point or it could be some other external um, uh, s something hitting the system. So. Uh, we used like the analogy in the previous slides talking about like a, a cruise control in a car. And so as you're driving down the road and you start going up a hill, that hill is this external disturbance and your control system should then respond to that. Okay. All right. So um, looking at that transient response, how are we responding to this change? Uh, we have something called the dead time the rise time and the settling time, 
Okay, so the dead time is this amount of time here that the system changed. So time t equals zero in this plot, the set point changed from zero to one. So we had this immediate drastic change from zero to one. And the dead time is the amount of time it took before the system started moving at all. Okay. And as I mentioned before, part of this dead time is inherent in a digital system such as a PLC because we have to wait for at least one scan before it even notices that the input has changed. So the set point moved from wherever, you know, from it was sitting here at zero and then the operator or somebody comes along and they change the set point up here to one but we got to do a new scan before we see the new value of the set point right so we have to go through the logic of the program at least one scan and if you're using some sort of timing mechanism then it it could be even longer than the scan time of the plc but set on that uh, timing timer and so uh, once we notice that there is a change then we start adjusting to that change okay so assuming it is a positive change as shown here then we have what we call the rise time and so the rise time is defined as being between 10 percent and 90 percent of the final value that we get to now notice it's the final value of this that we get to. We may not get to the set point, or maybe we get to the set point and go beyond the set point. Okay, so the rise time and the settling time, both of these are looking at where the system ended at, not where the set point is at. Okay, they in this case they're one and the same, but they may not always be, as we see in our system here when we get into it. All right, so um, <clears throat> the settling time, well, there's there's the rise time I written out on another slide, right? So the rise time is defined as going from 10% to 90% of the final value, okay? So in this case, I have overshoot, but I'm looking at the final value and I'm looking for when I got to within 90% of that final value, even though I overshot it by a whole bunch, okay, by 20%, I'm, I'm looking at the amount of time it took for me to first get within that 10% of the final value. So between 10% and 90%. And then the settling time is how long it takes to get within 10% and stay there. Uh, or And so in this case, the rise time, I overshot, but then I came back. The settling time is how long when I get to within plus or minus 10% and stay there. All right, and then the the final thing that we really have to talk about is just the in the um, is the steady state error. I don't know if I have it in here, but the steady state error it's got to be in here somewhere. Let me do a search. Okay, there we go. So the steady state error is the difference between what our set point wants us to be at and where we're actually at, okay? So that is the steady state error. All right, now one thing that uh, they talked about a lot of times with uh, changes is when you have a step change, a step change is a very dramatic um and effectively instantaneous change from the previous value to the new value all right and it's really not good a lot of times for systems to be forced to change that fast 
And so a lot of times what they do is they uh, use a ramp type system to ramp up to the new set point. Okay, so you'll see that a lot of times in control, they talk about like a ramp and a soak where we we don't want the set point, you know, we, we change it, we might set the set point to go, you know, we're going up, you know, 50 degrees or whatever the, set point setting might be, but we really don't want our control system to go up that fast. And so if that's the case, in those cases, we what we do is we uh, we have to kind of build into our logic that when we see a huge change in the step point, in the set point, we then ramp up the control. So we kind of have like an intermediate set point that we let ramp up slowly to prevent the system from changing too fast. Okay. So I just I wanted to mention that we're not really going to um, to do anything with our control systems for that, but that's uh, a lot of times you actually do want to do that in your system. Okay, so those are the values that we want to talk that we need to think about. So let's go ahead then and take a look at today's lab. So we go into Blackboard, go to Lessons, and I put it right at the very top to uh, make it quick to locate this. And so, so this is our assignment here. And so we'll have to submit this, okay, document. So, uh, but if you notice there, here, there's two links associated with this. So the first one is the PDF file. Um, I'm sorry, that should be a doc, Word document because you guys need to modify that. I will uh, upload the new, I'll upload a Word document there so that you guys can actually um, open up Microsoft Word and, and edit that, okay? I wasn't thinking when I put a PDF in there, but, uh, but anyhow, that's, I'll go through the document here and I'll upload that at the end of class. All right, so here's the document. So there's a place here where you want to put your name. And again, it, it needs to be a Word document so you can edit this file. So you're going to put your name in here. But then uh, here's the instructions, OK? So we're going to download this other file. So if we flip back over to Blackboard, all right, there's a second file, which is RLC system 14.dmd. Okay, and the, uh, <clears throat> so we're gonna download this file and I'll kind of walk you through that there in a little bit, but I don't wanna go through the lab first so we have an idea of what we need to do. So we're gonna download this file. We're gonna open it in the Do More um, PLC software, the designer software, all right? And so I give you some instructions here. When you open this, you wanna, um, <clears throat> What it does by default is it like gives you the list of your previous uh, projects you've been working on. So, um, I and depending, there's a tip of the day thing that pops up unless you uncheck the box. Um, so you wanna just close, you know, you can read the tip of the day or whatever and then close that. And then close the select project window because we're gonna have to go to the download location, okay? And so then we're going to, um, open up the uh go go to the open icon and traverse over to our downloads and get our downloaded file which is this file right up here uh and again you guys don't actually see the mouse but it's this rlc system 14 file okay i guess i can highlight here um all right so this is the file that we're going to download and open all right now once we open this file what this file is is it's a virtual system okay so i i took that rlc circuit that we talked about in the slides so if we flip back over here to the slides It's a second order system. I guess it's in the other set of slides. Okay, so in the uh, week 10 slides, 
for lecture 10. Um, down here near the end, I talked about this RLC system. There's somewhere. Okay, I thought about it. Well, okay, it's it's an RLC circuit. Okay. Thought I had a diagram of it in here somewhere. There it is. Okay, so it is in the lecture 11 slides. All right, so this is uh, the RLC system that I was demonstrating the other day. And so what I did was I basically took this system and I built it virtually inside of ladder logic. So it's a digital sort of copy of this RLC system here. Uh, the only difference is the, I did change the values of, of L and C a little bit, and I really changed the value of L. So the value of L, I think, is something like 10,000. So I made this system really, really slow because I want you guys to be able to sort of visualize it and see it moving around, and you'll see that when we look at it here in a little bit. And so I, I tried to slow it down some. So the easiest way to slow things down is to add a lot of resistance, okay? So this is actually just a really, really slow, overdamped system. So it really looks just like a resistor and the capacitor. Um, you know, you, you don't really see the inductor piece in the circuit here, um, but, but that's actually what it is. It's an RLC circuit that I digitized, okay? And so what I've what you have is you've got lots and lots of of IO or variables or tags, um, you know, what, however you want to think of it. You've got lots of those inside here. So what I did is um, your first kind of exercise is to kind of look at these tags, and I'm, I'll walk through this with you. And I gave you uh, descriptions of them over here on the right hand side so that you know what they are. Okay, so what you're gonna have to do is fill in the blanks. Okay, and these two are grayed out because I just didn't name them, I guess. So um, there's nothing to fill out in the under nickname, but the other spots you can fill fill in the what the actual IO uh, name is and what its initial value is. Okay, and so you're gonna fill out this table and then you're going to simulate it open loop and record the rise time the settling time the percent overshoot which there won't be and the steady state error and you'll put those values in here and then i want you to like create a trend and i'll walk you through that we'll create a trend paste it in here and and all that so like i said i need to get you the the word document so you can paste it in there Okay, so is there any questions? Nobody's put anything in the chat window here. So, all right, so let's go ahead. What, we, what you need to do then, um, come back to Blackboard, click on this file and download it. Okay, so you're gonna download this file. And so again, the name of the file is RLC System 14. Dot .dmd dot .dmd is the do more designer um, extension okay and so you download that normally it downloads to your download directory okay but if you're not sure if you're using firefox here you can come over here to the downloads do a right click and say open containing folder and then you should see where that was downloaded at okay and uh find this path here so you know where it's at up here in this address bar okay so you just want to um verify that um and so anyhow so then we download that file and then we're going to come over and open the do more designer okay when i just tried to click on that file uh 
it, it didn't seem to want to open and register in Windows. So that's why I kind of had to uh, do this. So, uh, so we're going to open the Do More Designer. This is the tip of the day. You close the tip of the day, and then it says, hey, let's select a project. Okay. And so we're just going to hit close here. Okay. Or I guess we could hit browse also. If we hit browse, and then what you need to do is come find your downloads and find out where that was downloaded, and you should see that file. You see, I've actually got two of them here. I've got one RLC system seven and RLC system 14. So the one we want to use is the 14. You guys won't even have the seven there. Um, so I'm going to open this. Okay, and so when you open this up here in the designer software, okay, it may or may not ask you to, uh, sometimes when you open a project, I guess uh, because I opened this one, it wasn't a previously open project, it didn't ask me. But uh, sometimes it like asks you if you wanna like load from the PLC or, whatever i find the best option is to do a go offline or stay offline option under there so um all right so anyhow now i've opened up this file here and you can see there's a main task and under the main task i have a timer called flip and i have a timer called flop and that is a uh, timer t4 and timer t5 so when when we look at this document here when we look at these tags you see here when i'm asking for the nickname flip that's timer t4 and flop is timer t5 okay now there's a couple of ways we can see that one of them is if we come over here to the right side of the rail to our outputs of the rail and we do a right click just do a right click over here somewhere you'll see something that says element browser okay and so if you click element browser you're going to see all your different elements and inputs and outputs in here so if you click on timers for instance click down here at timers you can see these are all the timers i created with nicknames and so if you click on delta t system you can see that that is timer three and if you click on flip, you can see that that is timer four. Okay. If you go to your um, digital inputs, you can see I don't have any digital inputs labeled. If you go to your analog inputs, remember analog inputs are WX0 or through X255. Uh, now over here, I've got several of them. One of them is called flip time adjust. Okay. And another one is called the gain. And this last one is called set point. And I'm not actually using that one. Um, it's not in, it's, it's actually not being used in the ladder logic anymore. So, um, but you can see that um, WX6 is a gain. That's for your proportional gain. And then WX5, it is for um, adjusting the flip-flop timers, okay? Now the flip-flop timers, what they do, let's look at the logic here for a minute. What flip does over here in the logic, flip is a timer. When the timer is timing, what it does is it moves in a value of 25,000, or excuse me, not 25,000, 2,500 into the set point, okay? So it moves 2,500 into the set point. And then when it's done, then the flop timer can, starts counting and it also moves 750. So what this is doing is it's gonna flip flop between 2,500 and then it's gonna flop down to 750. And then it's gonna flip, flip back up to 2,500 then flop down to 750 and back and forth and back and forth. Okay, so this is the set point. And so what I did, what this is doing is it's just changing the set point 
So we can see the system bounce back and forth as the set point is changing. So, so these two timers flip and flop are just flip flopping the timer, uh, or not the timer, but the set point to two different set points to keep the system moving so we can see what's happening. Okay. All right, so then um, as we scroll on down, then we see there's there's uh, mainly a bunch of um, move statements in here, but we see right here, um, this one here is WX5, which is the flip time adjust, okay? And so if you notice the flip-flop timers, they have a preset value called flip time. And by default, that flip time is set under something called the first scan. I'll come back over to the first scan in a minute, okay? But um, if you if you wanna speed up or slow down how fast it's um, flip-flopping, you can use the analog input WX5. And so what I'm doing here is if you if you move WX5, it starts out at zero, but if you adjust it anything above 50, what it does is it um, adjusts the timer. Now remember that these timers are in terms of milliseconds, just like it in the Allen Bradley. So what I'm doing is I'm multiplying 10 times the analog value. All right, and so if the analog value is 100 and you multiply 10 times that, then you get 1000, which is one second. All right, so anything more than half a second, then it's going to um, start activating and it's going to use this flip time. Now, be warned, once you adjust WX5, and above 50 and this takes place you'll never get back to the default value yeah i mean you can get to it by adjusting the the wx5 but that's the only way okay unless we scroll all the way down here to the bottom oh or did i not put it in here i guess come on okay yeah so right now there's no way to reset the system, okay? Um, which might be a problem. I added that in, but apparently it didn't get into the copy I uploaded. All right. So um, one thing I recommend that you do with this is we go to edit mode here, and I'm going to add a contact value of X7 down here. Remember X7, it is a digital input. And what we want to do here, let's see, how did this, um, oh, yeah, uh, I'll maybe upload that later here. Um, we need to, just to kind of reset your system. So there's a call that you can make to force the first time scan, okay? So um, now all the rest of this, let me finish looking through here. So um, this right here, if you press X4, that creates that open loop control that we talked about. So if you remember, right here on our open loop control, all we're doing is we're taking the set point, feeding it into the system, and we're looking at our output. Okay, that's our open loop. So this system that I gave you has an open loop control, and that's what this line is. So if you turn on X4, then you're going to move the set point into the control output, okay? Now, all the rest of this, when you look especially at rung nine, rung nine is this digital RLC circuit here. You don't really have to understand this. It's really not all that complicated. Um, it's just doing a bunch of moves. And then it's basically kind of doing integration here. So the um, first thing I'm doing is some moves. 
And then after I do those moves, I'm calculating the new value of my capacitor. This, this RLCK here is basically the output voltage of the capacitor. All right, it's a, again, it's a digital value of that. Okay, so what I've got is I've got this extra timer here <clears throat> called the Delta T system timer. And this extra timer, what this extra timer is doing is adjusting the, um, or it's, it's, it's adjusting these, every time delta T is done, which is every 10 milliseconds, it's shifting all these values and calculating the new value, all right? So notice that this calculation here is done after all these moves. It's critical that you do this calculation after the moves. If you do the calculation before you do the moves, the value is never going to change. All right, so, so this is our digital system here. But before we try to run it, let's come over here to the first scan. Because if you look at this calculation, you see there's lots of different values in here. There's a B0, there's a B1, there's an A1, there's an A2. And then there's um, there's all these RLCK, COK, all right? And what the K is, is our time step, okay? So the, the time step is the delta T. Um, so every K, K basically represents uh, that we just went another 10 milliseconds, okay? So our delta T timer has, has tripped, okay? So when we look at RLCK, this is at time delta T. If we look at RLC K1, this is actually K minus one, the previous time step. So this is the previous value. That's why we're moving it. Um, all right, so if we come to first scan then, the problem is we have to initialize all these values. So in Allen Bradley software has a first scan too. I don't know if you ever talked about it in PLC one. I know I didn't mention it in PLC two yet, but there's a first scan setting for PLC that you can use to initialize any values that need to be initialized. And so that's what I'm doing here. I've got this first scan here and you look at it, it's basically just a bunch of move statements. Okay, oh, I do have the restart in here. It's under, um, it's under here. So um, that's right, uh, the, way, the way to call the first scan is by a restart, that was it. I went to program control and there's a restart here. Okay, um, this rung shouldn't be, in the uh, first scan that I put it in the wrong place. This rung should be in your main program. Okay, so um, yeah, so what happens is this, uh, this is calling a restart, okay? And what the restart does is recall the first scan task. Okay, because this first scan is only done once. When you first start the PLC, it runs the first scan. So, um, so you should have in your main task uh, a rung that looks like this, where you have an input that if you flip this input, it'll force a restart, which forces it to rerun the first scan. All right, so the first scan here is nothing but a bunch of move statements. Like I say, right now, your first scan also has this restart in it. So you should take this wrong, wrong 12, uh, cut it out of the first scan and paste it in at the bottom of your main. It really doesn't matter. It could be at the top of the main or anywhere because um, it's going to force a restart anyhow. But what these are doing is they're initializing these values. So you see here, we've got your flip time is set to 10 seconds, okay? And WX1 is set to two. I'm not sure if I'm really using that one anymore, but here's my A1, my A2, my B1, my B0 values, 
Okay, you don't want to change these, but that's where these are coming from. They're getting set in this first scan. Okay, all this is do, being done to calculate this virtual system. So I'm simulating this RLC circuit. Okay. Yeah, thanks, James. I just saw your comment there that you had, I don't know how long ago, <laughs> but I found it. Um, all right, so... Uh, <clears throat> So anyhow, so that's the first scan. Um, like I say, technically it, it it'll get run the very first time you run the uh, you start up the PLC. All right, but by moving this over to the main task and tying it to my digital X zero, if I press X zero, I'm going to reset the system. Okay, by running this first scan again. So if you do change things. You can, and it, what happened is I got the system unstable and it pegged out and I had to like close out of everything to get it to rerun it till I found this restart here. So you wanna have this restart so you can kind of restart the whole system if you need to, okay? All right, so that being said here now, um, if we click over here on our do more, Okay, I'm going to save these changes, by the way, once you, if you make the changes. Um, actually, before I do that, there's another thing that's kind of nice. It's called data over here. And if you click on the data, it pops down these date, these, um, this down here on the left hand side, it creates a little data window. And down here, we can just, we can like put things we want to look at. So, like, I want to look at the set point. So, you just type, start typing set point. And then I want to look at the RLCK. Remember, RLCK is the voltage of my capacitor. That's my output. That's my process variable that I want to feed back in. So I want to look at that here. Uh, if you want to view or change other values, like um, your flip time, we can change with the... Um, with this, uh, it's already being done with an analog input, so we don't need to change that. But um, uh, we can view these, like here's my control value. If I wanted to like change A1, for instance, I can put it here and uh, I can make changes to it, or I can put A2 here and make changes. And that'll modify the actual system. So right now, I, it, this is just gonna show it to me. If I click edit over here, select mode, the E's for edit, and then I can add in edits and I can force changes on these. So I'll just kind of show you that. Uh, but it's nice to be able to view these when they're running. Okay, um, you can also see them in the do more simulation, but it's, sometimes it's nice to have it over there running too if you flip screens. All right, so now what you see here is C4 and C5 are flipping back and forth. These are my flip-flops. You also see that y, WY4 is showing you my output. So what I did was I took R4 is the set point. Okay, so over here is R4. R4 is the set point. Okay, so we can see that if we right click over here, go to that element browser, and we go to our real values and we go to set point, we see that R4 is the set point and RLCK, which is my capacitor. Okay, I could add an extra description here. You know, this is like my capacitor. voltage, okay, and hit the right detail and you can apply those changes there, all right, and so this is, um, this is my capacitor voltage, okay, and this is my set point. Now, so what we can see here is in the simulator, we can see that my set point is changing between 2500 and 750. So this C4, C5 is just kind of showing you that it's flip-flopping back and forth, okay? 
But um, I also just kind of wanted to use this analog output to display it. Now, the reason I didn't select like zero and one is because it wouldn't display over here very well, right? Because one, it, this thing goes up to 4,000. Remember, our analog outputs go up to 4,096. And so if I was going between zero and one, you wouldn't really see it here because it would be so small. So I chose my set points to be between 2,500 and 750 so that we can visu visually see them here in this simulator. That's why I chose those values. There's nothing other than that, just, just to make it visible. All right, so now right now, we, we're not, we, our set point is flip-flopping back and forth, but we're not sending it into the system. So remember, in, if we flip back to the logic for a minute, to send the open loop output to the system, that was rung eight here. If I turn on X4, I'm going to take my set point, which is toggling between 750 and 2500, and I'm going to send that to the control output. So what that means is I'm going to send the set point into my system. Okay, so, but I have to enable X4 to do that. So when I flip back to the circuit here and I press X4, you're gonna see now that YW5, and you can see it moving here. Remember, L RLCK is my output process variable. It's the output of the RLC circuit, which is effectively the voltage across the capacitor. And so we can see here that now as the set point is bouncing up and down and up and down, we can see that my output is following that system. Okay. Now this, remember this is um, a discretized version of the RLC circuit. And I made some adjustments to it. So you see that it's actually getting more, it's actually going up above the 2500 set point. Okay, so you see that bouncing there. So um, y, WY7 is the control. Now remember, this is open loop control. So with this open loop control, all we're doing is we're moving the set point, whatever the set point is, we're moving it out as our control. So we don't really have any control. We're just taking the set point and say, go here. And as it, and then the set points flipping back and forth. Okay. All right. So now, if we go over here to trend, okay, and we click on the trend button, we can get a trend. And what I want to look at for the trend, the first thing I want to do is look at my set point. So if you type, start typing set point, you'll see that. And then if you type um, your RLCK, which is our output of the system. Okay. And then I also want to see the control. And so if you do this, do it in this order. So you get the set point is white. The um, voltage across the capacitor, RLCK, is red. And then your control is green. All right. And so now when you see that, you see, remember that the white and the green are right on top of each other. So you're not really seeing the green because it's just being covered up there. Now, the other thing is you want to click on this options, come over here to your left axis and um, scale that between zero and 4,500. Okay, I don't like auto scale. Auto scale bounces around so you can't tell what's happening there. I'm sorry, I put 45,000, got an extra zero. Okay. Max, oh, <laughs> max goes on top. 4,500 goes on top. Read the message there. And minimum is on the bottom. Okay. All right. So, uh, yeah, I do not like the auto scale. So now you, you can see. That here's the system, the system's going up and coming down along with the set point. However, it's not going up to the set point, it's actually going above the set point, and then it's coming down, but when it comes down, it's still above the set point. Okay. 
So this system, although it's it started out being the original RLC circuit, but um, I ended up modifying some values so that our we definitely have a steady state error. Now the problem is we're not seeing it reach steady state. So what we need to do is we need to come back over here to the main. You see these tabs over here? So if I come back to the main and I, um, I look there, there, here was this flip time adjust. Okay, so remember WY5 is flip time adjust. And if I adjust that, I can speed up or slow down my simulation so i'm going to flip back to the simulator and go to yx5 and i'm going to adjust that to make it about 10 seconds okay and if that isn't enough you can adjust it some more okay but by doing that now you notice that the white is not changing quite so fast And then we can see here it's it's rising up, but it still didn't reach the value. So I need to adjust that some more. Okay. So I'll go up here to say 20 seconds. Okay. All right. So um, 2,000 multiplied by 10 gives me 20,000. And remember that's in milliseconds so that's 20 seconds okay so now we can, as we watch this all right we can see this thing going here okay and we can click on this record and we can record this and then we can pause it so that we can read it, okay? So again, what you need to do is read this and determine the steady state error. Remember the steady state error is the difference between the set point and the uh, final value here, okay? And we also wanna measure the rise time. The rise time is the time it takes to go between about 10% and 90% of the final value, okay? Okay, so you can save these values, okay? In here, um, you can also take a screenshot of this, all right? So if you hit the, um, the Windows key, and you type in snipping tool down here. So down here, if you type in snipping, it says snipping tool. And come over here and say new snip. And what you can do is you can copy this, or you can take a screenshot of this and copy this and paste it into your lab. So that's part of the requirements for the lab is to take a screenshot. Okay, so where did I get the trends? Did you find the trends, Austin? Sorry, as I'm talking here. So the trends are up here on the, in the main program, okay? And let's see. Okay, to uh, to see the trend, you have to have the simulator running. Okay, and yeah, if the program quit, you just kind of have to restart it here. Okay. Any other questions? I see. Actually, you get Brian answered some of those for me. Thank you. All right, so, um, but this is the uh, the trend here. Like I say, you want to um, use this trend here to get the thing. So this is the open loop, all right? Now, what you guys need to do is close the loop. 
So for proportional gain, to close the loop, it's really, really easy, okay? So if you click on this, uh, back in the designer program, if you click on the do more simulator, it should uh, actually shut down the simulator. And then you come back over here, click on edit mode so you can edit this. And what I'm gonna do is, and you really need to do this before the system. So if you come down here, you see this says main rung of system. All right, so I'm going to click on the main rung of the system and I'm going to right click on there and say insert rung before cursor. So before rung nine, I'm going to insert a rung so it becomes rung nine. I'm going to grab a contact which is going to be X5, which is my digital input X5. And over here, I'm going to go to math. I'm going to do a compute statement or a math statement, which is going to be C. The result is going to be my control output. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that gain. Okay. So if you remember, uh, I don't remember the name of it here. Off the top of my head, I don't know why I made it so hard, but it's it's like gain times 10. That was in the lab. If we look at the lab, I have it listed here. Gain underscore time underscore 10. So I'm going to take gain underscore time 10, divide that by 10.0, multiply that. times the set point minus RLCK. This is my proportional gain. That's all there is to proportional gain. It's really, really, really easy to do, okay? All right, so, oops, my result, yeah, my result should be uh, COK is my result. That's my control output. So this is my control output, and I'm going to output, this is the error, right? This is the error, set point minus your process variable times a gain, okay? And I'm dividing the gain by 10 so that I can make more adjustments. Because remember, I'm going to use this, uh, this gain times 10 is my analog input which doesn't show up there but um and so that is my control okay. all right so now i'm going to go ahead and accept these changes and you probably want to do a file save project as and save this as some new file call it um proportional or something so do a file save as so that if you make a mistake, you can go back to the original one or if it crashes or something. Um, well, that's why I'm on number 14 here because I keep doing a file save as and giving it a new number uh, just in case something happens, okay? So that's where the number 14 came from. All right, so if we then um come back after we accept that and we save that and i'm going to click on my uh simulator again okay now <clears throat> when you click on this okay, it's uh moving this remember x4 is open loop so you can still do open loop but if you click on x5 that's going to be closed loop but you've got to adjust it, all right? So WX6 is your gain. And so as you adjust that, okay? And I don't know why it kills the trend every time. Does anybody know why it, the trend disappears on me? Every time I do this, my trend disappears. Okay, I wish I could save the trend, okay? But we're gonna do set point first. And we're going to do RLCK. 
and then we're going to do the control out. All right, so, and then since we've lost it, I got to reset my auto scale. The max is 4,500 and the min is, should just be zero. Okay, now what I want, want you to see here, this is why I set the, the, uh, the maximum to 500, because you notice that the control is green and the control is like way, way, way big up here. Okay, so my controller is like way, way up here kicking this. But notice how fast the system's responding now. And if I flip over to this, if I slow it down some, the system will respond slower. Okay, I slowed it down too much. All right, so so as you um, as you adjust that, you you notice this green is really really big now. Okay, I should maybe even divide by a hundred. Right now I'm at fifty. Okay, so. All right, but this is our control here. So you notice that if I if I reduce the gain, okay, so right now my gain is at 16. So if I reduce my gain, the, the control doesn't go so high. See, over here, the control was going really, really high. And now the gain's not going nearly as high. It's still going above 3,000. All right, but before you can you can scroll back and see if you use this, um, you can change your time scale. Um, but if you uh, record it, you can go back and look at that too. But the um, gain here, right? As you increase the gain, so right now it's topping out at about. 3500 or something but if i increase the gain it's pegging out way up here but look how much faster the system is responding okay so look how i i stopped the plc here so that i can stop my simulation no the simulation is still moving okay <clears throat> So if you if you go to historic historical, that's how you can view it. So way over here, we were maxing out way up here about four thousand, and then I changed the gain, and it didn't max out so much, but it took longer. You see how long? Remember, the red is what's rising up. Okay, but notice the steady state error. The steady state error over here is huge. This is my steady state error. Over here, I had a really big control, but my steady state error was much smaller. Okay. Now this right here one you can't really look at because I was adjusting the gain at this time. So it wasn't, um, when you look at this value here, this this was, I was in the middle of adjusting gain. So you, you gotta let the gain sit at a fixed value uh and and look at that to determine steady state values all right but that shows you this is closed loop response with just a proportional feedback okay so let's if we come back to our main okay the control the ladder logic for proportional feed back is really simple i mean look at this this is uh Where's it at? Yeah, scroll down. There it is, right there. This is rung nine. Here's rung nine. That is my closed loop control. 
proportional feedback. Okay. And that's all there is to it. All right, so for the lab, I'm just asking you and I'll upload the document so you can make those changes to it. But in the lab, the lab i'm just asking you to kind of go through the logic look at these tags record their values and what they are um, and they use the names nicknames instead of tags okay but um get the nicknames and then do run the open loop determine the rise time settling time steady state error and then put in the closed loop which i just did for you and Adjust it so that the rise time is half of what the rise time was before. And then adjust it so that the steady state error is less than 100. Okay, so when you rise, when we go to the trend here, right, here's my value. Uh, and here's where I'm going. So I'm going to 2,500. Okay, uh, I'm going to 2500, but the um, but the um, my my set point is going to 2500. I'm sorry, I said that wrong. The set point is going to 2500, but the actual final value is at like 2200. Okay, and if you need to, you can adjust your axes to read it a little more accurately. Um, but when you do the screenshot, give me the zero to 4,500. But you can always pop back in here to options and you can adjust these to go, say, between uh, 2,000 and 3,000 or something. Okay, and then you can read, we're going from 2,500. And you know you can read these values a lot more accurately. So you can adjust. You can come over here and adjust this. So you can read the values better. So there's 2,500. And now we're down here. Um, and actually, okay, I, I see the value now. I, I couldn't see it before. But um, if you see down here in the, when you're moving this pointer, you see those numbers in the very bottom left moving? Those are your time and your Y value. So I can see the red is 213889. Okay, so you see that down there um, in the bottom left corner of the window of the application. So that when you're moving that little, these little crosshairs around, it's showing you those numbers. So you can read them pretty accurately. All right, so that's pretty much it for the lab.